Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to pick up on that series of why do reels fail and how can you uh, help avoid the failure. And I showed you a couple on the introduction. I'm going to start with this Daiwa Pro uh, 10G. It's a bait casting model. Very difficult to turn, very dirty. Uh, there's, this looks like it's probably been sitting in a shed for a while before somebody decided it was just uh, no longer of any value. Uh, there's also a noticeable click in here as the level wind moves. So, uh, good candidate to start with. Let's take it apart. I'll explain some things about the working of these uh, reels as we go along, how to do the uh, maintenance on them, and then hopefully maybe we'll put this one back in service. We'll see. The uh, the core in doing any of these that you pick up at a um, at a flea market or yard sale or you know somebody's got a garage sale with a pole and a reel on it just make sure it's complete <clears throat> if it's complete and if it's a brand name you got a chance of getting parts for it if parts are needed and in many cases you'll just find that somebody bought this one for maybe a kid uh, maybe themselves I don't know uh, a while ago and then uh, just uh, fell into disuse and got shoved to the back of the garage or something and uh, and then just uh, sat there for too long. So my initial guess on this reel is that it's just poor uh, lubrication, a lot of built up junk, and we'll see. Uh, let's start with taking this side off. Take the side off, there's two thumb screws. Once you break that first one, uh, the second come easy. Now, uh, not all bait casting reels are the same in terms of how they come apart. Uh, this one is very straightforward. It's got screws on both sides. In some cases, there's no screws on this side. You try to figure out how to get that there. Uh, a lot of them involve a twist, uh, where you would have to twist the side blade a quarter of a turn or something. Okay, take that out. I'm going to take the spool out. I'm going to put a rubber glove on because I never know what's uh, inside these things. I'm going to put my parts that I take out in the parts tray. Now on this reel, there's not much on the non-gear side. This does have kind of a mag drag effect. Uh, there is a little mechanism in here that um, controls the casting. We're going to take that side off because I want to look at the worm gear that drives this um, the pawl. I want to look at the pawl as well. So while we're disassembling, this is the number one failure for a bait casting reel where the level wind doesn't work. It's that the pawl is worn or chipped. The pawl is that little piece that rides in the cup. Uh, typically you have a cup on the bottom and a little spacer washer. You lose that spacer washer, it will operate inefficiently as well. And then in the pawl itself, oh, that's, you know, this one's probably one of the causes for it. Use a needle nose pliers a lot with small pieces. Uh, this pawl actually looks pretty good. Uh, if you can look at the pole, there's two sides to it and a kind of a U-shaped. You got to make sure that the points on that are good and that it's clean. Uh, this one doesn't have any oil on it, so it's going to probably reinforce what I said already. So tip number one, keep your uh, reels clean, keep them um, oil. So let's talk about it. This reel is probably a couple of years old now, maybe even a dozen. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with it. If, uh, if the parts were not available, if you couldn't get that pawl and you noticed that maybe one was worn to a little side, you do have some play in the pawl and you could actually use a small file and uh, try and just restore the points. Uh, it's not the best fix in the world, but it is a fix if you can't find the part for that. So I'm going to go put that in the parts tray for now. We're going to open up the other side. It has the three screws in it. And again, if you were to... Uh, find that there are no screws on the side of your bait casting reel, which is not unusual, then uh, you probably have to do an eighth or a quarter of a turn on the side plate, and usually in an upwards motion. I know that's how the uh, the Abu Rivas work, Rivos, uh, that'll give you the access to that. Okay, so I'm just going to take it apart. Should be able to pull that side, there we go, we can pull that side plate out. Of, little trim ring came off the side there while we were at it. Uh, internally we have that little mag device with the adjuster. I'm just going to make sure that the adjuster works and that adjuster does work. Uh, while I'm at it I did notice where this came from. We're going to go put that back in. 
okay and then uh, I'm just going to set that aside that doesn't require maintenance on this one there is a bearing in here that does require the maintenance so we will put a, a dab of oil on that and this is dry as a bone so kind of what I'm thinking here there's a uh, my guess is this this reel probably hasn't been used in a few years since sitting in a shed okay so I want to check that uh, worm gear and that's why I had to open up that access panel and this is your worm gear they're different lengths and sizes uh, depending on what kind of a chassis you have on your bait casting reel what I'm looking for here is uniformity I want to make sure that there's nothing that's pushed out of the way here maybe the result of uh, something getting banged or that that would cause the uh, the pole to stick as it's traveling through these these gears and then I'm just going to grab a little bit of steel wool I notice there's some dirt on here so again that's sort of reinforcing what we're talking about here about the lack of um, lubrication okay so I'll just grab a steel wool pad I use 4-0 steel wool it's uh, enough to clean without uh, becoming abrasive and I'm just going to, to clean, clean this off and hope that that's a good reason why some of that stuff uh, just isn't operating, operating very fluidly. Okay, and then if you needed to get into grooves, you could pick a, a, a screwdriver or a pinpoint, but there's no uh, accumulated grease. I do find in these reels that sometimes people smear a lot of grease on there and it becomes over lubed and that's, uh, that could be a problem as well. All right, so I'm gonna go put this back in. There's a little T on this that holds a plastic ring on the back here that holds it in place once you reassemble the side plate. The side plate, we oiled that, uh, that purring, so we're gonna go put that right back in there. And we're just gonna button that thing up as quick as we can. Now there's some small screws in here. That's why I use a parts tray because I don't wanna lose these. Uh, you lose them, you're gonna spend a lot of time walking around looking for them on the floor or on your workbench or whatever and uh, it's kind of productive. All right, so there's two more of those to go. And uh, so this reel was probably a nice reel when it was first released. The technologies are not that different. The fashion statements certainly are. Uh, almost all of the reels today by comparison have gone to a high speed. Uh, this is not high speed. Uh, this is low profile. But it's, uh, you know, if you're looking at a, a Revo, for example, I have one here on my bench, so let me just grab that. Uh, here's, a, here's a Revo, uh, which is the same manufacturer, right? Whole different thing in terms of a, a uh, fashion statement, right? Big gears below. Uh, uh, this is what I was talking about. If, if you don't have screws on the side, they take a twist. Uh, but overall, same type of fi fishing elements uh, needed there. Okay, so then this uh, we just oiled up. We're going to put that spool back in. And I'm just going to set that back in here for a moment. Uh, now's a good time, I guess, also to reinstall that pole. So I'll take that pole. I use a, a uh, needle nose pliers because it's a tight spot to get it into the carrier. And this typically with the pole you got to work because you got to catch the teeth into the in, into the right spacing on that fork there you go I just audibly heard the click and since that was dry I'm going to use a little real oil on that see if we can't loosen it up there and then I'll put a little real oil on that worm gear as well and then we're going to reinstall the cap on that, uh, that pole there and remember that there's a little spacer in there you lose that spacer and uh, this may not operate properly. So, and again, I'm going to use the, uh, the needle nose pliers to, to just get that positioned correctly. And we can come in and do that with a uh, screwdriver to set the rest of it. Okay, now you can turn that manually, and that's kind of making all the difference in the world right now. So, uh, good. All right, it seems to be doing what we want it to do. So let's do a quick uh, look at what's under the hood here in terms of the gear side. These reels are relatively uncomplicated. Uh, my guess is this is just going to take a squirt of uh, oil. 
and we should be fine. If this thing is what I believe it is, which is a shed sitter, uh, the drags and everything will be good in this. All right, so take the top off. You got a nut. The nut uh, should come off without having to remove that E clip. All right. And as, as many of you have seen before, you need to have a lot of different wrenches because each manufacturer uses a little bit of a different uh, combination. And eventually, you find the right one. Just bear with me. I'll get there. There it is. It's the 10 millimeter wrench. So I keep uh, the common use wrenches in my uh, uh, bucket here. I keep both the metrics and the uh, the Americans, uh, depending on whose reel you're working on. It changes it a little bit. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. So you do have to remove the C-clip because you can't get the handle off if you don't. Okay. So we'll take that off. This is one you want to careful with because if that C clip so that C clip because it looks like a C if that C clip goes flying you won't be able to properly reinstall it. So into the parts bucket here comes your handle now. There's a little spring tensioner. I'm gonna back this off. That's the star nut. It holds the drag support. Okay, and then we have those small screws on this side which are holding the bridge in place. There's two of them and there's a centering pin on this reel. And I apologize for the length of this one, but when you think about this, this length is probably going to be about a 15 or 20 minute video maybe. And what you'll find is you took one off of somebody's uh, pole at a garage sale, you put about 15 minutes into uh, an effort and you put the fishing reel back in. Typically what I do with a lot of these, uh, I don't, this isn't for personal use. Yeah, look at how clean this reel is. So this has been a shed sitter is what that's been. Um, and there's uh, really not much more you can say on that other than uh, I was looking for the other screw. So this is a, this is a typical layout of a, uh, uh, a casting reel. You have the main gear. You have a drag set under there. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to assume that that's fine. This is your anti-reverse dog that goes. Uh, this is your main gear. None of this has been lubed in, in quite some time. So I'm going to use some blue grease. I'm just going to put a little bit on the, the gear teeth here. Take some of the noise out of this reel. I noticed it was very noisy. It's probably because it's been probably since it came from the plant. That, uh, it's uh, worked like this. This is a good time to tell you if you're working on reels and you don't know what this reel is, and I'm kind of going on gut instinct here, but it's a good time to tell you if you don't know what it is, take a picture before you start doing anything. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get uh, run into problems uh, when you go to reassemble. So, And then this one just this clip fell out, but this is the on off clip. So I'll we'll put that back in the Those of you that watch my videos know I have a little bit of trouble with uh, small pieces and parts. And my guess is that's going to be wrong, so let me do it from the other side. Okay, so that's reinstalled, and then when we go to put the other screw back in, it's going to hold that spring back. Alrighty, so uh, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take that real oil. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts in this reel. Just want to make sure that they get the oil that they haven't gotten for some time. All right, and then I'm just going to put that back on. Now again, if I saw any dirt in there, or I saw any other causes for concern as I was doing this, then I would certainly go ahead and, uh, and, and 
and change that out. Okay, so there's something that's binding here. We're going to take another look to make sure that uh, we're okay. We got the springs set on both of these. That should be the biggest issue at the moment. And this has come out again. That's probably what it was. Okay, so I believe that when that piece came out up top that I did reinstall it incorrectly. It's riding on this, this, this post over here, not the post from the screw. There we go. Okay, the snap tells you we're in. There's two piece, two little screws here, and again, I apologize, I don't do well with small screws. It's kind of funny, I was watching a video. If, uh, if you like these videos, subscribe to my channel. There's another channel I'll tell you out there to subscribe to. It's Scott's Bait and Tackle. Scott's is the distributor for Penn Parts on the East Coast. Uh, he might be the whole distributor, quite honestly, since Penn was located in Philadelphia. It's called PennParts.com. Uh, Scott and I probably share a passion about repairing reels. And uh, we both <laughs> also share this problem with small parts. So uh, if you want to uh, see what he's up to, uh, go right ahead and, and subscribe to his channel. Okay, so that works. We're going to do a quick turn to make sure everything seems to be working before we, uh, we go any further there. And then we're going to remember how we did this, right? We're going to put this on first, which is the, the, the uh, star drag nut. Sometimes the, uh, the nut doesn't spool because the, uh, there's no drag. You use your needle nose pliers to, or something uh, similar to screwdriver. Kind of put a little pressure on it to hold it back until you can grab it from the top. Just looking for a slightly smaller one. That's why uh, your, your tool bag, very important about what you load in here. There we go. Now we got it. Keep your uh, tools in hand because if you have to leave your workbench, uh, you may forget a sequence in terms of what you were doing and it can become problematic later. Okay, we've got that on. Now we're going to put the spring tensioner on. We'll put the handle on. And you will recall we had that. C clip went on, but there's a washer under the C clip. And the C clip now, sometimes you can get along if you have hand strength, you can get along with just pressing that in with your fingers. Sometimes you may need a little bit of extra support with a needle nose pliers. The core, in terms of putting a C clip in, is to make sure that you're in the groove. was half in the groove and not. So, so they say the key to uh, real repair is a, uh, a good pliers, a good screwdriver, patience, and a good sense of humor. And I will tell you that uh, with these reels, every now and then you just kind of have to laugh. Uh, you laugh at it, how people have uh, abused them maybe, you laugh at how somebody may have designed it, uh, you laugh at Things like, how could that possibly have gone wrong, and so on. But have a good sense of humor. Laugh at yourself. It's, uh, we're not all the best here. Okay, and then we're just going to tighten that down with the 10 millimeter wrench that it took us a little while to find. Put the cap back on. And the nut. Make sure it lines to that uh, little insertion point there you can set the screw off a little bit. I left the screw in the cap, so I'm taking a stab at it here. Okay, that should be good. I put a little bit of grease on that spool shaft. 
grab this. Now there's one final thing on this little release here. You got to make sure that the there's a hole in this where the uh, there's a little stud in the hole on the spool release. And if you don't get that in properly, it's no good. All right, there we go. Tighten it up and moment of truth. And from what I just saw and what I, how little I know of this reel, I think we'll be fine. So, oh, we got a smooth operator now. Look at that. The, the item is moving fine. The cast buckling in. Yep, we've done well with that. We're back, in, uh, we're back to going fishing. So there you go. All right, so I hope that helps. It gives you a little idea of why reels fail. It gives you a little bit of an idea about the inside of a bait caster. We looked at servicing the pawl, which is the number one failure on these types of reels, lubricating that. Looked a little bit about the mag drag system, although we didn't touch that at all. Uh, and just from a general cleanup, uh, there's still some dirt on there. If you wanted to hit it with WD-40 and a paper towel, you could do that. If there was some grease on there, you could use a general degreaser. Okay, we've been long enough on this, but I did want to show you that and uh, point out some of the ways to work this. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. If you liked it, please subscribe to uh, my channel and indicate that you liked it on the video. Thank you for viewing.